Before looking at opioid analgesics in detail, let's first see how pain is transmitted. The nociceptors present in the various tissues such as skin and even internal organs, what happens is that they can be stimulated by any sort of stimulus, mechanical, thermal or chemical and thus pain is transmitted to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and then to the cerebral cortex for perception. This pain transmission is mainly mediated by uh, neurotransmitters that are substance P and glutamate. Now remember that our own body also tries to cope with pain by producing endogenous substances. There are mainly three families of endogenous opioids that are produced that include endorphins, encephalins, and dynorphins. The endogenous opioid system is one of the innate pain relieving systems. Now, these opioids act as neurotransmitters and neuromodulators at three major classes of receptors, termed as mu, kappa, and delta. Now, the mu receptor is mainly associated with analgesia, both on the spinal and supraspinal level, respiratory depression, dependence, sedation, euphoria, remember euphoria, meiosis, and decrease in GI motility. The kappa receptor has all these properties except euphoria because it causes dysphoria that is opposite of euphoria that is a state of unease or uh, unhappiness. While the delta receptor has all these properties and in addition has a proconvulsant property as well. Apart from the endogenous opioid system for pain relief, we need analgesics from the external uh, source for surgery or any sort of pain actually. Analgesics are drugs that will relieve the pain without significantly altering the consciousness. They will relieve the pain without affecting its cause. They can be opioids and non-opioids. The opioids are also known as narcotic analgesics and they are derived from poppy plant, opium, and chiefly they will include morphine, codeine, and heroin, etc. Well, the non-opioids are NSAIDs, for example, and they have been discussed in another video. To discuss the mechanism of action of opioid analgesics, we'll see the site where they act and the mechanism by which they act. Their site of action can be the primary efferent pathways, the spinal cord pain transmission neurons, that is the ascending pathway, the pain modulating neurons in the midbrain and medulla, and can also modulate the reactivity of pain in basal ganglia, hypothalamus, limbic system, and the cerebral cortex. While the mechanism by which opioid analgesics work can be divided into uh, GI coupled receptor activation, both presynaptic and postsynaptic, and also their effect on releasing the endogenous opioids that we just discussed. Presynaptically, what they will do is they will decrease calcium influx, and we know calcium is required to cause exocytosis of the neurotransmitter and thus there will be decreased neurotransmitter release of nociceptor primary efferents that is uh, the neurotransmitters glutamate and substance P while postsynaptically they will increase potassium conductance and thus there will be inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Coming to the classification of opioid drugs they include the agonists the mixed agonist antagonists and the antagonists, pure antagonists. The agonists can be further divided into those derived naturally, the semi-synthetic ones and the synthetic ones. The naturally derived ones will of course include morphine, codeine, thebane, pepavirine and noscapine. The semi-synthetic include heroin, folcodine, hydromorphone, and oxymorphone, while the synthetic ones include pethidine, 
also known as meperidine, tramadol, methadone, and fentanyl. Oh, and just so you know, Michael Jackson died from fentanyl overdose. Next are the mixed agonist antagonists, which are drugs that will activate some opioid receptor subtypes and block other opioid receptor subtypes. For example, buprenorphine. Buprenorphine is a partial mu receptor uh, agonist and kappa receptor antagonist. Lastly, the antagonists will include naloxone and naltrexone, which will reverse if we have cases of opioid toxicity. Naloxone will reverse the respiratory depression that is associated with opioid overdose and naltrexone has a use in decreasing the craving of alcohol while methyl naltrexone can be used in the treatment of opioid uh, induced constipation. That should be easy to remember. Now we'll discuss the effects of opioid analgesics on uh, both acutely and chronically and these effects are not uh, specific for every drug. These are actually a general overview, both the effects and side effects that you need to know about opioids in general. The first acute action is of course analgesia. Both emotional and sensory pain will be suppressed because uh, the emotional pain uh, will be suppressed because they have an overall euphoric effect and makes the patient happy. The full agonists that we discussed has the, have the highest analgesic activity while the mixed agonist antagonists uh, can antagonize the analgesic action of the full agonist. So let's say you have a heroin addict, so you should not give him or her um, buprenorphine because it will antagonize the action of heroin and will agitate the symptoms and the patient will become more uh, pain sensitive. The next effect is sedation and euphoria and this effect is seen at lower doses. Thirdly, we have respiratory de depression and this is a dose dependent one. Now what the opioids do is they inhibit the respiratory center and decrease the responsiveness to increased carbon dioxide in the blood. Now we know that the respiratory center in the medulla is stimulated to increase the respiration in two cases. One, when it sees that partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high and secondly, when it sees that there is decreased oxygen partial pressure. Now one part of that uh, regulating mechanism that is increased carbon dioxide in the blood that will increase respiration has been blocked by opioids, right? Now we have only one way to wake the respiratory center up and that is the hypoxic drive to breathe. Now in this case of respiratory depression that is by opioid overdose, if a patient comes you should not administer pure oxygen for him to breathe. Why? Because if we give him oxygen, what will happen is that this hypoxic drive to breathe will also be killed and the person will not breathe at all because the respiratory center will see that there is increased oxygen. So there is no need to increase respiration. So it will be further depressed. So that's why in such a case, don't give pure oxygen. Remember, don't give pure oxygen just give naloxone that needs to uh, reverse the respiratory depression and thus the patient will be saved. The next action is nausea and vomiting because it will directly stimulate the chemotrigger zone in the medulla. It also has an antitussive action because it suppresses the cuff center in the medulla as well and the main drugs that can be used for the antitussive action are codeine and dextromethorphan. The GI effects are due to decreased longitudinal muscle contractions and increased circular muscle contractions, that is increased contraction of sphincters. This can cause a constipation by decreasing the peristalsis but can be used in diarrheal cases. Now these can should not be administered in biliary obstruction as uh, it may relax the longitudinal muscle and allow the stone to pass but strong contraction at the sphincter of odai will cause pressure build up and thus rupturing can be seen. Meiosis is also a characteristic of all opioids except meperidine. Now this action is due to the inhibitory effect of opioids by decreasing norepinephrine 
but we know that acetylcholine is dominant in the eye and thus will cause meiosis. Pinpoint pupil is actually a characteristic of opioid poisoning and remedy is naloxone and atropine. The chronic effects will include tolerance and dependence. Now tolerance to pharmacological effects is seen except for constipation and meiosis and some level of cross tolerance is also seen. In cancer patients, opioid rotation is seen that is switching from one opioid to the other. Tolerance is of pharmacodynamic type. That means when opioid analgesics inhibit GI receptors for a long time, that means decreased cyclic AMP, right? But the cell will adapt and will increase cyclic AMP through other pathways and thus uh, will lead to pharmacodynamic tolerance. Dependence can manifest as uh, abstinence syndrome or precipitated withdrawal. Abstinence syndrome will manifest when uh, the addict has been deprived of the opioids for a long time and it will manifest as lacrimation, rhinorrhea and salivation that is not due to parasympathetic activation of course but is due to sympathetic activation and also anxiety, sweating and goosebumps etc. while precipitated withdrawal is uh, managed by administering antagonist to a dependent person. That's all about opioid analgesics.